Hi and welcome to this next video in the series presented to you by Dorks Woodwind and Brass. Clarinet, woodwind instrument. What produces the sound? Air, or rather, the air gets the reed vibrating, the vibrating column of air produces a sound. Without a changing column of air, we have a bland result of music. So we need, with the air, to do many things. We need to shape a phrase. How do we shape a phrase? By modulating our airflow. Being aware of giving more and giving less. It's a little bit like imagining your thumb over the top of a hose pipe and letting out more water and less. Or a tap, opening it more opening it less. It's a very simplistic analogy, but it's roughly the same. And we need to, from the earliest days of our playing, get used to that idea that the airflow is a living, alive, pliable, modulatory, changing thing. It's a vital part of the equipment of being a fine woodwind player. So we don't have the external bow which we can change the weight of, the speed of, that a string player has. Our bow is our airstream. And how does a young player start to become aware of that? Well, it's those long notes and those crescendos, diminuendos our teachers tell us to do right from the earlier stages. So I suggest to you begin on an easy note, a C for example, and over a slow pulse of four, using a metronome, set it to 60. Produce a crescendo and a diminuendo. As you're doing that, having breathed in correctly to the lowest part of your lungs, effectively, it's not anatomically correct, but psychologically it's a good thing to think. You breathe down very low. Maintain that feeling of expansion as you play through. So there's that strength in your core. It's not about being rigid and strong in that way. It's just about being secure in this air column that you're producing, which is allowing the sound to speak. On that one note, we could apply here a visual aid, if you like. And if we imagine, and we say to our young students, imagine a wiggly line like this. That is going to be your airflow. Already they're beginning to experience the ability to change the speed of the air, increasing it and decreasing it, which is going to be so vital to their playing. That is used, one very good example, if they are playing something in simple time and in compound time, and so often young players find it a challenge to play in compound time. There's no reason why, really. But what is often absent is a shaping to the phrases because of an absence of any true change to the airspeed. There was a study by Demnitz, and if you have the book, Elementary School of Clarinet Playing, if you were to turn to page 7 and look at number 8, it goes like this. Very often one hears it without that shaping to the second bar, but it needs to be felt that the first note is sounded and there's tension and relaxation, and then it grows through to tension at the beginning of the bar and relaxation. It's a little bit like a piece of elastic, that things are doing that all the while in music, and you're always going somewhere or coming away from somewhere, and everything needs to have shape and a purpose and a line. you're playing interesting make people want to listen to you. You can start to develop that when we consider again duplets and triplets. If we take the notes C and D slightly stress 
each C, just that slight increase in the air allowed onto each of those notes, which will create that feeling of duplets or pairs of notes in simple time. If we then want to produce compound time, we're going to have to pre produce that pulsation on every three notes, which is slightly more of a challenge because each note is therefore going to change because it's an uneven number, so we get the C and then we get the D. <laughs> Those notes will feel different to produce and when you begin to become aware of that that's called differentiated playing. I could talk about this in great detail but I just wanted to introduce the topic. Very often a student will say to you oh but on the music you're asking me to crescendo and diminuendo and there's, there's nothing written. What, why am I doing that? And you say ah well the overall dynamic may be for example piano but within that you can have gradations. So the overall shape might be there, but within that you can, you can do all this and it brings the music to life. Our Airstream as well is very useful if we are having difficulty with legato, a particular interval for example. I mean all the time we should be using our air to produce a good legato, but for very young, very young folk when they're first starting out they might have problems for example playing over the break. And in that instance, just a slight push of air as they go from one note to the next will help that considerably. So our Airstream, what is it used for? It is there to aid a good legato. As we change from one note to another, we increase the breath. We don't tighten, we just slightly have that awareness of increasing the Airstream. And it is there to shape the phrases that we play, to make the music that we play interesting. So there are an infinite way that you can, there is an infinite way rather, that you can play musical phrases and it's up to you what you think sounds good. So experiment. Take one phrase you know well, try and play it in let's say four different ways to start with. Record yourselves, listen back. What do you like? What don't you like? Experiment. Write some dynamics into the part with pencil. See what you think. Surprise yourselves. Have fun. Thank you. Bye for now.